HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HKM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HKM News, we have the latest news and highlights about Hiller Sports. The Planning Board hosted the second public hearing regarding the Chamberlain Street Wayland Road subdivision. The Hopkinton High School Class of 2018 took part in the annual Junior Prom Grand March. And Matt Clark will get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Gary, uh, long day for you today. Yeah, it's certainly a long day, but um, it's great. Just had so many people out supporting us, and uh, I think um, great turnout. So really grateful for everybody that, that came out to vote and also that came out to support us. On Monday, May 15th, it was town election night in Hopkinton. Candidates, families, and residents filled in the Hopkinton Middle School cafeteria and awaited the results, which were released at about 10.30 p.m. Here's a look at the festivities, which aired live on HCAM during Hopkinton's town election night. It, I think uh, it's been great meeting the community and having people come by and waving. It's been, it's been an enjoyable uh, experience. Oh, I've been uh, out there in Sign Alley for decades now. Yeah. Um, this that, is my... What, what, was you, what was your take on the whole day? How, how did it feel? What was the electricity like? Or what? Well, I, I was inside for a lot of the day getting some work done, but uh, by the time I came out, the sun was starting to shine. Uh, I think a lot of the candidates were out there uh, from early in the morning, and I'd really admire them for that. Uh, I know the Republican side and uh, the Democrat side were were uh, hunkered down, and sure. they were. Uh, I always enjoy people's company out there, and uh, so I'm sorry I missed a lot of it. But when I was out there, it was a beautiful day, and I understand it's been a. Uh uh, a long campaign trail, and uh, you mentioned you're a little bit tired today, and I know you've been putting a lot of work into your campaign. Uh, could you talk about uh, the process and how your first campaign running for town government went? You know, um, the process has been great. I mean, today, uh, let me start by today. Today was uh, a long day, I know for all the candidates. It was a lot of energy I saw, a great turnout. And uh, But I think if I go back four or five weeks, it's been a great experience. I mean, the people that I've met, people who have that came out and supported not only me, all the other candidates, and um, it's, been a, it's just been a, a great, great experience. I mean, winning, losing, that's something else. But I think generally the whole experience was, uh, uh, was very inviting. <laughs> And uh, it, it was an eye-opening, and there were a lot of other new candidates who uh, who ran, and I think I even speak on their behalf too that it was just a great, great experience. How you doing? Very well. Very well. Very excited. Very excited. Is this is the first time you ever run for anything? Um, yes, I think uh, so. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you, any other volunteering uh, that you do? Yes, of course. Um, I volunteered at the senior center. Yeah. As you know, I'm a greeter there. I love uh, I love that question. Oh sure. <laughs> And um, also, I volunteered as a math tutor at the Framingham Public Library. And besides that, you know, as and when they have needed volunteers at my son's school, you know, whether it be a book fair or um, calling, um, you know, uh, when they had the kindergartners come in sure. or, um, you know, just anything at all. Always doing something. I'm happy to do that. Any, any opportunity I've got and been able to make it, I've, I've done that. Uh, can you talk about uh, what made you want to run for school committee? Um, well, I wasn't really excited about the results of the election this fall, so I, I looked into what I might be able to do to actually take some action in response to my sort of not-so-awesome feelings about this fall, and I am a teacher and um, have a sort of long-standing interest in lots of grad school and lots of experience in education, so I figured school committee was a good fit. Well, you're smiling face out there this morning. The pouring rain and the cold, it's still smiling now. How was the experience out there at Murder's Row? Well, you know, this is, uh, I guess this is probably my 
tenth uh, election out there. We're not well. Then, then just the, the national and the states sure. and the primaries. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I just figured that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you if you want to be a, a good, engaged citizen, you go out, you vote, and you and you, you you pick a candidate and you and you support a candidate. Sure. And uh, you know whether it's a local, a state, or national, and that's what you do. So that's what I that's what I always do. And so, it, especially for me this time. I got out there at uh, just after six o'clock this morning, and I didn't leave there until we cleaned up the whole place out there, policed right. the area, yep. and um, I don't know. I'm waiting to find out what happened. Good evening, everyone. I have unofficial results of the annual town election, May fifteenth, two thousand and seventeen, for board of selectmen, John M. Catino. 1,236. Aman Ali Hadri, 1,216. Board of Library Trustees, three year. June A. Harris, 1,050. Stanley D. Polnick, 716. Sue M. Curry's, 1,047. Margaret A. Wigan, 1,320. Parks and Recreation, three year. Laura Hansen, 1613. Amy Markovich, 1267. And Christina M. Anderson, 1044. Planning Board, five years. Kenneth R. Weismantle, 925. Muriel Kramer, 1148. Amy Ritterbush, 1364. Gary Trendle, 1032. For Planning Board, one year. Irfan Nasrullah, 1253. Al Alfred W. Rogers, 945. Thank you very much, and thank you to everyone who put forward the time and effort to run, whether you came out successful or not. Uh, We all appreciate your volunteerism. Thank you very much. The Hopkinton Police Department hosted their annual fishing derby. The cool, cloudy, damp conditions made for great fishing weather, and a good time was had by all. It was a great time. We had 144 kids that showed up uh, for the Sturby. Uh, the weather was great. The rain held off. Hopefully, you know, for a couple more hours so we can clean up. Uh, I want to thank all the people that donated to the uh, police association to make this day possible. So thank you so much. It was a great success. fish. Where's my buddy Dylan? Dylan! Where are you? Smallest fish. What's that, two years in a row? Yep. Are you still bring the same one back? Congratulations. Small trophy for a small fish. All right. First fish caught. John Hood. Where's John? John probably would have won every trophy here, but we only give one. He's going to get two because he got the first fish. And the first fish is the first fish. Yeah. All right. But he he also is getting most fish. He caught 29 fish. Wow. There you go. <laughs> okay. For the third. Oh, who got the? Jesse. Yeah. Just to get the last fish. At the, right at the buzzer. He was running up to the table as I was pressing the air horn. Good job. So third biggest fish. Where's third? First, second, third. He would have tied the last fish. Did you just look at the size? They're all eye level to me. I got 13. At 14. Zach Ferguson. <laughs> All right, Zach. Congratulations. 
Yeah, the 13 was smaller than the 14. Oh, you got it? Okay, second. You're supposed to put these in order. Second is Robbie, and I don't know, I don't have a last name. Robbie Scott. Robbie Scott, I'll just get to him. He's coming over now. Is he? He's over there. Oh, there you go. All right. All right, Robbie Scott. Nice. And for the biggest, at 17 inches, oh, I know. Chief I Lee. Know. <laughs> Again, it's children 15 and under. <laughs> He's young at heart. It's Hopper Ray. Liz Hopper. Well. Seriously, you reeled in a 17 inch. <laughs> the trophy's bigger than Hapra. It builds an everlasting memory for her. You won that, yeah, right. Uh, we're, go we're gonna have to call that drone back and look at the video. I want to thank everybody for coming. This is a great event for the kids and uh, the police department. This is funded by all the businesses and people in town. Um, so thank you, and we'll do it again next year. See you a year from today. It was a packed house at the HCAM studios as dozens of residents showed up for the planning board second public hearing regarding the Chamberlain Street Wayland Road subdivision. Here's a recap of the highly anticipated meeting. Welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, May 8, 2017. Uh, thank you to HCAM for hosting us again here in the studio. Uh, obviously, the uh, town hall is still not dried out and uh, has been put back, so our meetings will be here uh, in the foreseeable future. So thank you very much, HCAM, for taping it and providing uh, this wonderful room for it. The agenda tonight is uh, one continued public hearing on the special permit concept plan for subdivision off of Chamberlain and Wayland Street. They felt the plan was feasible. They didn't feel that it was necessarily likely to be approved by the commission. So between that and the additional feedback that we received um, in the memo, which came out late last week, uh, we decided to basically take another look at the conventional plan, looking to reduce the number of wetland crossings to see uh, what that particular site plan would look like. So uh, we did not have time to distribute it, but we did bring copies tonight, and we'd like to just go through it a little bit to show you where the changes are as far as reducing the number of wetland crossings, the impact it had on the number of lots, um, and then the subsequent impact on the open space concept plan that we presented. Well. So again, that is a 32 lot layout, and that layout <clears throat> does have an emergency access uh, between the two cul-de-sacs that uh, we uh, look to minimize the impact to that wetland crossing itself. Uh, now that we only have the two wetland crossings, uh, that being the biggest, which would be where the emergency access would be, uh, we've pro uh, proposed a 12 foot wide paved access uh, with automated gates at either end for the emergency uh, uh, fire department and police department to access either end of the cul-de-sacs if they chose to. View the full planning board public hearing on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Coming up next on HCAM News, the Hopkinton High School class of 2018 took part in the traditional junior prom grand march, and we have the latest in Hiller's sports, you're tuned into HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Do you have what it takes? Make a difference. Oh, 
always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology.